Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to this video and um, in this video I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your Kubernetes cluster, your local Kubernetes cluster. So this one is not has nothing to do with the uh, the GKE if you've got a cluster in uh, Google Compute Engine, sorry Google Kubernetes Engine in the Google Cloud um, or in the Amazon, it's nothing to do with that one. So um, if you have been following my video, I've been um, explaining how to create your own cluster um, in your workstation with um, Vagrant um, using VirtualBox as the hypervisor. Um, I can follow this step um, if you've got uh, a Kubernetes cluster on-premise, um, not on the cloud. Um, a short disclaimer, so um, I've been reading the official documentation, so uh, the process I'm following here I'm not sure whether it will work. I'm just going to give it a try following the official documentation. Um, I'm not sure whether this one is the uh, will be the best practice, uh, but uh, this is just to give you an idea of how you can upgrade your Kubernetes and what is actually involved in um, upgrading Kubernetes and what components are involved and in what order you need to upgrade the um, your cluster stack um, and so on. Um, but don't just follow this tutorial uh, in your production environment. Um, just uh, get a good understanding um, of how you can upgrade your Kubernetes cluster and keep this video as just a as just a learning resource. That's it. Okay, um, I'm gonna cd to play directory, and I'm gonna git clone my Kubernetes repository. Um, the repository link will be posted um, in the description if you want it cd to kubernetes and um, if you cd to vagrant provisioning um, I've got a vagrant file here and if you do vagrant up it will set up a kubernetes cluster with three nodes one master node and two um, worker nodes um, all of them are running CentOS 7 uh, in virtual machine okay so um, when you use this um, Vagrant file, um, it will always provision you the latest version of Kubernetes, um, which um, at the time of this recording is 1.13.3. Um, recently, one of the um, viewer asked me, um, he wants to install a specific version using my Vagrant um, file. Um, for example, he wants to install version 1.9.0. Um, so what I did was you could, you could install any specific version um, because we were using CentOS 7, um, you could um, add a Kubernetes repository. And if you just do yum install uh, kubeadm kubelet, it's going to install the latest stable version. And you can also install a specific version, um, for example, kubeadm-1.9.0. Um, so what I did was um, I created a different Vagrant file just to show that it it will work and there are few differences between the vagrant file in this location um, and the one I've created specifically for uh, 1.9.0 mm, I'll explain you what um, what I mean okay so in this vagrant provisioning it will install the latest Kubernetes cluster version 1.13.3 at this point and there is a bootstrap file where I add the Kubernetes repository so that's the Kubernetes repository, and I'm installing uh, yum install kubeadm kubelet and kubectl commands. Um, so from version for each specific version of Kubernetes, they um, provide you with a list of Docker versions that are supported for that particular uh, Kubernetes version. Um, so installing Docker, what I've done is I've added a Docker repository. Uh, for community edition docker dash c and installed um, docker using yum install docker dash c so by doing this um, at the time of this writing at the time of this recording when you do that it will install version um, 1.18 or 18 is it um, but which is supported for kubernetes version 1.13.3 but if i wanted to install version 1.9.0 of Kubernetes, um, this latest version of Docker is not supported. So I had to do a little bit of um, uh, hack to get install the, uh, uh, the supported version of Docker. Okay, so if I go to the base directory, Kubernetes directory, once you git clone your 
the repository here. And there is a miscellaneous directory, and in there, there is a vagrant provisioning by version. Um, I've hard coded version 1.9.0, but whatever version you want, please um, change it and see if it's working. Otherwise, I can dive in and then see um, what changes you need to make. Okay, in here, the vagrant file itself is the uh, the same file, so no changes. The same set of uh, um, virtual machines, one master node, two worker nodes, everything is the same. The only change is the bootstrap dot shell. Bootstrap dot shell. And um, if you look the file here, I'm installing Docker from uh, the official repository. Yum install Docker. So I didn't add any Docker uh, repository. So whatever version that comes um, with CentOS 7, that should be sufficient. I think it will be 1.13 or something. Um, but I verified that it's working and everything else is the same except you're adding the Kubernetes repository and while well, coming to the installation part, yum install um, kubeadm and I'm specifying the version here. So if you don't specify that, it will install the latest version available from the repository, which is 1.13.3. Okay, so here I'm specifying 1.9.0. So that's how we install uh, a specific version of uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so for this demo, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to install Kubernetes cluster version 1.11.0. So I'm going to change this to 1.11.0, 1.11.0, and kubectl 1.11.0. That's all needed, and I'm going to do vagrant up. Okay, so this one is going to take a little while, eight to nine minutes in my machine. It needs to download, um, I think it's it has already got the boxes, but it needs to download um, various parts, various container images, and initial, initialize the cluster and so on. Um, okay, so while it's um, provisioning the cluster, I'm gonna talk about the upgrading part. So what should you do when you're upgrading your Kubernetes cluster? The first thing is, um, you can't jump uh, bigger versions. For example, if you are if we are on version 1.11.0 and the latest version is 1.13.3 uh, or whatever it is, um, you can't directly jump from 1.11.0 to 1.13.3. So you need to, you can only do a jump on the minor version that is 1.13. Uh, for the next minor version. I mean, from 1.10 to 1.11 to 1.12 to 1.13. So um, it's a big step. You can't directly jump. Like when it comes to upgrading your Ubuntu uh, OS, you can't upgrade from 12 to 16. You have to go through 12 to 14 to 16. So that's the, uh, the path you need to take. So similarly here, we are installing uh, the cluster version 1.11.0. Um, we'll be going to 1.12.0 and then from there we'll go to 1.13.0. So that's the idea and when the, when the cluster is up I'm going to schedule a pod, uh, a simple Nginx pod, um, just to see um, whether we can um, upgrade the cluster without breaking uh, any of the applications there. Um, but I haven't tested that before. I'm going to test it now following the official documentation. Uh, the idea is you're not going to you're not going to upgrade all your nodes at the same time. Um, for this case, I've got one master node and two worker nodes, and I'm going to um, schedule an Nginx pod, just one pod. Initially, it will be running on one node, and then when I um, uh, do upgrade that node, uh, the pod will get rescheduled on the other node, and uh, when the upgrade is done on the first node, I'll be upgrading the second node, at which point the pod will get rescheduled to the first node. So it's just a, uh, just to test whether um, this is going to work. So first we'll do the master. Um, what we got to do is we need to upgrade kubeadm command itself, the first command kubeadm. So that's how you'll, you'll be applying your upgrades, kubeadm upgrade command. So for that we need to upgrade the kubeadm tool and then we need to install the uh, desired version of the uh, kubectl, kubelet, and kubeadm packages. Uh, 
But before doing that, what we need to do is we need to drain uh, every single node, which means when you drain the node, it marks the node as unschedulable, um, which means um, basically we're going to work on that node. So whoever connects to the cluster, uh, whoever submits uh, a deployment or any kind of resources doesn't get scheduled on this node while we are doing this maintain maintenance part. So once we upgrade the cluster, we need to release the node so that it can take the uh, deployments um, or any resources again. So the, the process is called, the concept is called um, cardening and uncardening. Um, so once the cluster is ready, I'll show you what I mean by um, all these uh, things. It should be fairly simple and I hope this should work. And again, um, I'm not sure whether this is the best practice, but I'm following the official documentation, so I guess it should be. Uh, but that might be lots and lots of best practices if you're doing this on a production cluster with lots and lots of um, deployments running. Okay, I'm going to pause the video here and wait for the uh, the cluster to come up. I think it's going to take another six or seven minutes. All right, Vagrant provisioning is done and the cluster should be up. What I'm going to do is I am going to uh, copy the Kubernetes configuration file to my host machine so that I can run the uh, commands uh, and interact with the cluster from my host machine. So make directory dot cube under my home directory and I'm going to scp uh, atc kubernetes admin dot conf uh, to config file under the dot cube directory. Okay, let's check the status kubectl version minus minus shot. Okay, uh, don't worry about the client version um, because the client I've downloaded uh, from the uh, uh, from the GitHub uh, at version 1.13.0 but what is important is the server version. And if I do kubectl get nodes, so we've got three nodes, one master node and two worker nodes. All of them are in version 1.11.0. So even though the right, uh, the stable version now is 1.13.3, we used our Vagrant provisioning to install a specific version of Kubernetes 1.11.0. So if I do kubectl get nodes minus o wide, we'll tell you what Docker version it's running. Uh, it's 1.13.1. Okay, so let's upgrade this to uh, version 1.12. So before that, let's run a simple uh, nginx deployment. kubectl run nginx. Um, minus minus image, nginx, replicas1. Um, okay, uh, the deployment has been created. kubectl get all. Container is getting created. Watch kubectl get all. Okay, so there is one deployment, um, one replica set, and one um, instance of nginx pod running. Okay, so let me wait for the container to get created and I want to um, see the Nginx pod in the ready state. Okay, so that's running now. Um, I'm not going to create any service or expose this uh, deployment. Uh, this is just to verify what happens when we uh, do the upgrade. Okay, so kubectl get pods minus O wide. Um, you can see the pod is running on K worker 2, so that's good. Um, or actually, what we could do is we could um, create another replica. Okay, let me do that. kubectl scale nginx scale deploy nginx minus minus replicas equals 2 watch kubectl get all minus o wide okay so as you can see here um, there are a couple of uh, nginx pods one on each of the uh, the worker nodes um, so i just want to show you how to take a node off by evicting a pod um, basically it will get rescheduled on the other pod while we upgrade the um, 
uh, or we upgrade the node. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the web browser and I need some commands for from the official documentation. Um, Kubernetes upgrading. Upgrading Kubeadium cluster from 1.2, from 1.12. Upgrades. Um, okay, Juju, I don't want those. Upgrading Kubeadium clusters. Kubeadium upgrade, I think that's the one. Guidance. Yep. Um, every upgrade process might be a bit different, so we have documented each minor upgrade process. So what we're going to do is we are going to upgrade from 1.11 to 1.12. Basically, we're going to use the kubeadium upgrade command to um, do that. Let's go and look at that one. Okay. CentOS upgrade the control plane. Yum upgrade minus y cube ADM okay cube ADM upgrade plan um, cube ADM upgrade apply so once we do that we gotta upgrade the master packages cube CTL drain okay upgrade the Kubernetes packages on each node by running the Linux package command okay that's cool System CTL restart kubelet. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to log into KMaster first. SSH root at KMaster. Cube admin is the password. Okay. So what we need to do first is to upgrade our cube ADM command. Cube ADM version. So we've got version 1.11.0. So let's up, update that first. Yum upgrade minus y cubadium 1.12.0. So yep, 1.12.0 updating. And if I do cubadium version now. It's 1.12.0, so that's done. And the next command is we need to check whether our cluster can be upgraded uh, to any other versions. So the command is kubeadium upgrade plan. OK, it's checking. And it says our cluster can be upgraded. Uh, but it says available 1.13.3, which is the latest stable um, at the moment. And you can do kubeadium upgrade apply and the version number. Uh, but it won't work since we are on version 1.11. We can only go to 1.12 any version, 1.12.12345, whatever available. Uh, but we can't go to 1.13.3. Uh, okay, so cube kubeadium upgrade apply version 1.12.0. So now we are upgrading the cluster. We updated the kubeadium binary and now we are upgrading the um, the package. kubeadium upgrade apply 1.12.0 uh, and it's asking for the confirmation. Are you sure you want to proceed with the upgrade? Why? So found one parts with the label upgrade pre pool. So whatever it's doing, I think it's not going to break the engine exports running on the um, on the worker nodes okay um, the upgrade command completed successfully and it says success your cluster was upgraded to version 1.12.0 enjoy and there is a note now that your control plane is upgraded please proceed with upgrading your kubelets if you haven't already done so so that's what we're gonna do now um, Throughout the process of this upgrading, uh, the cluster, the kubeadium upgrade uh, command didn't break uh, the existing pods. So still the pods are running on kworker1 and kworker2. Um, and if I do kubectl get nodes, still uh, the kubelets are all in version 1.11.0, but the cluster is upgraded. And if I do kubectl version minus minus shot, I can see the server version has been upgraded to 1.12.0. So now what we're going to do is we need to 
um, drain the master node, upgrade the packages, and uncarden the master node, and then do the same thing on all the other nodes, one by one. <coughs> okay, I'm going to start the watch command again. Um, all of them are running now, and the next command I'm going to do is cube adium, cube ctl, cube ctl drain, um, and the node name, kmaster.example.com, minus minus ignore daemon sets. Do you specify the right port, right host or right port, okay? Let's see what happened. kubectl drain node minus minus ignore daemon sets. kubectl version. It says it can't connect to the master. Okay. That was unexpected. Unable to drain node. On the master node, you must add. Okay, prepare each node for maintenance, marking it unschedulable and evicting the workloads. I'm not up upgrade the master and node packages. I don't think we need to do that on the master. But anyways, okay, let's go ahead and upgrade. M upgrade kubelet 1.12.0. Um, ah, that's right. I know why. Uh, because I haven't copied the um, uh, Kubernetes config file. That's right. Let me do it from my host machine. Um, kubectl drain kmaster.example.com minus minus ignore daemon sets. So what this means is we are going to put the master node in maintenance mode so no power will get or no resource will get scheduled on the master node. But anyway, we are not going to schedule any resources on the master node but it's always a good idea to do this one. Okay, um, kubectl get nodes and you can see kmaster node is, um, has got the status scheduling disabled. So that's what the drain command does. And once we upgrade the package, we need to uncoordinate um, okay yum upgrade minus y kubelet 1.12.0 and um, the watch command okay still we've got our pods running nothing happened so far we are good so far it's updating the kubelet package um, so that's done, and we need to restart the kubelet service. System CTO restart kubelet, but this is going to show us an error because it might have updated the um, the system D file. And um, as you know, um, in system D, if you've got uh, an update to the system D file, you need to do a system D daemon reload. Yep, system CTO daemon reload and do systemctl restart kubelet. Uh, the error here, the connection to the server was refused. That's because um, this, the settings have been changed, but still the pods will be running. We don't have to worry about it. Systemctl restart kubelet. So now let's check the status. Systemctl status kubelet. Cool, kubelet is running. And we've got uh, the command back. Yep, um, still we've got all our pods running, two worker nodes, uh, our master node should completely be um, upgraded. And last thing is we need to uncarden um, kubectl get nodes. So still uh, it's in the scheduling disabled mode, kmaster. kubectl um, uncarden kmaster.example.com kubectl get nodes. Okay, cool. Kmaster, and it's completely upgraded to version 1.12.0. So that's well and good. And now what I'm going to do is watch kubectl get all minus o wide. And uh, I'm going to do this on um, one of the first nodes, kworker1 node. Okay, so let me open up another pane here. 
is a such root at k worker one cube admin so I'm in k worker one what we need to do is cubadium version yep 1.11.0 um, we can upgrade cubadium and kubelet in a single command um, because we are not going to use the uh, the cubadium upgrade uh, command so that's only needed on the master okay so we need to drain uh, k worker one because we are going to do an upgrade on this machine on this node kubectl drain k worker one dot example dot com minus minus ignore daemon sets And you can see here the container is getting terminated that was running on K Worker 1 and it got rescheduled on K Worker 2. So, still we have got two pods. The deployments, replica sets are all working fine, they're all healthy. It's just that because uh, we are going to do some maintenance work on K Worker 1 and we drained it, it basically evicted the pod, it kicked off the pod from the, uh, from the worker node and it got rescheduled on k worker 2 okay so that's fine that's good so now we can go ahead and um, do our upgrade so one thing we got to do here let me close this one ssh root at k worker 1 if I go to this one um, upgrade the kubelet config. So this is what we're going to do now. kubeadm upgrade node config. That command is needed. Okay, so what this command is going to do, it's going to update the kubelet configuration file. Um, let's see what the subcommand does. Okay, it just returns the current version of kubelet installed. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that command. The configuration for this node was successfully updated. Now you should go ahead and upgrade the kubelet package using your package manager. Okay, so now if I do yum install, sorry, yum upgrade minus y kubeadm 1.12.0 kubelet 1.12.0 Okay, so we are um, upgrading the package kubeadm and kubelet to version 1.12.0 from the Kubernetes repository. And still we've got our pods running on uh, kworker2. And we are just working on kworker1. And once this, this is complete, we can do the same on kworker2. Okay, that's done. Systemctl daemon reload systemctl restart kubelet systemctl status kubelet it's always a good idea to check um, whether it's running okay so that's running and I can exit out of it kubectl get notes cool and we have updated our worker node kworker1 to version 1.12.0 okay so that's looking good and now we need to do the same for K worker 2. Uh, but before that, we need to uncoordinate because it's scheduling is disabled. So don't forget to uncoordinate. Otherwise, when you uh, drain K worker 2, and your pods won't have any place to go. So you'll have basically you'll have downtime for your Nginx application, whatever you're running. kubectl uncoorden kworker oneexampledotcom so that's uncardened kubectl get notes kmaster and kworker1 are ready so now let's drain kubectl drain kworker2.example.com so when i run this command you will see these two pods getting terminated on kworker2 and it will get rescheduled on uh, kworker1 Okay, so those two are getting terminated and immediately it gets created on kworker1. And it's running, so our application didn't break. Okay, so that's done and I can log into kworker2. And I need to run 
this command here to update the kubelets configuration file. And now I can um, upgrade the package yum upgrade minus y kubeadium 1.12.0 kubelet 1.12.0. So we've got our pods running, not a problem. What I'll do is just to spread the load, once this um, node is up, I'm going to terminate one of the pod and um, it will get scheduled on KWorker 2 when it comes back. Okay, so Kubelet is getting updated to version 1.12.0. Systemctl daemon reload. Systemctl restart kubelet systemctl status kubelet okay that's running kubectl uncarden kubectl get nodes and you can see it's upgraded to version 1.12.0 scheduling disabled let's uncarden it kubectl uncarden k worker 2 kubectl get nodes Cool, all of them are ready. Everything has been upgraded to 1.12.0. kubectl delete pod nginx g. Okay, that's terminated and a new one is getting created on kworker2. Okay, cool. And um, I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, basically, when I started the video, I told I'll be upgrading from version one. 11 to 1.12 and then from 1.12 to 1.13 but I'm not sure whether that's going to work um, because for version 1.13 um, the installed docker version is not supported the version we've got installed on all the worker nodes um, are version 1.13 docker version kubectl get nodes minus o wide um, 1.13 um, because we used Vagrant, um, we had to have certain version of Docker to install Kubernetes version 1.11.0. Um, um, I think I need to play with it a bit um, before showing you uh, a demo, but I can quickly uh, see whether it's uh, working, whether it will be okay to upgrade it. Okay, um, let's give it a try. Yes, a search root at k worker, sorry, k master cube admin yum upgrade minus y cube adm. Um, it will upgrade, it will be upgraded to the latest version 1.13.3 cube adm version 1.12.0. Um, yum upgrade minus y cube ADM. I don't have to specify the version because it will be 1.13.3. Cube ADM version. Okay, so we've got 1.13.3. Cube ADM upgrade plan. Okay, it says you can now apply the upgrade by executing the following command. kubeadium upgrade apply version 1.13.3. Yes. Okay, um, the upgrade command completed. Success, your cluster was upgraded to version 1.13.3. Okay, now let's do kubectl drain kmaster.example.com ignore daemon sets and um, kubectl get nodes 1.12 kubectl version minus minus shot our cluster version is updated to 1.13.3 and all the nodes are still in 1.12.0 okay and in here um, yum upgrade minus y kubelet 
Okay, I think this time it's pulling a um, few dependencies. I'm not sure whether this is going to work, but it's worth giving it a try. Updating kubelet to 1.13.3. Okay. System CTL daemon reload. System CTL restart kubelet. System CTL status kubelet. CTL status kubelet. Let's run in. Okay. Cube CTL. Watch Cube CTL. Get parts. Okay, so still we've got our two pods running, K worker one and K worker two. Um, cube CTL get nodes. We've updated our K master to version 1.13.3, that's good. And now let's uncarden it. Cube CTL uncarden K master.example.com. Cube CTL get nodes. Okay, cool. So now let's go to. The first worker node is a search root at k worker one cube admin. Let's drain this node cube ctl drain k worker one dot example dot com ignore daemon sets and uh, it's getting terminated k worker one and it the part gets recreated on k worker two. And we need to do this command kubeadm upgrade node config to update the kubelets configuration file. That's done, and we can do m upgrade minus y kubeadm kubelet. Um, I think there are a few dependencies as we saw in the master. Um, so far, we didn't see any problem, but I was expecting. Uh, problem with the Docker containers, Docker runtime. I wasn't sure whether the supported uh, the Docker 1.13 version is supported on Kubernetes 1.13. Okay, anyways, if it's working well and good, that saves me another video. System CTL daemon reload. System CTL restart kubelet. System CTL status kubelet. Okay, they're all running fine. Cube CTL uncarden K worker one. Cube CTL get nodes. Cool, K worker one upgraded to version 1.13.3. I'm going to drain Cube CTL drain K worker two now. And these two pods will get rescheduled on K worker one. Yep, it's getting terminated and getting created on uh, K Worker 1. Okay, so they should be ready. And if I log into K Worker 2 and run the command to update the kubelets configuration file, yum upgrade minus y kubeadm kubelet system ctl daemon reload. System CTL restart kubelet. System CTL status kubelet. It's running. Cool. And now I can do kube CTL uncarden kworker two dot example dot com. Kube CTL get nodes. Kube CTL version minus minus short. version minus minus short kubectl get nodes cool server version 1.13.3 that's the cluster version and uh, the kubelet version on all these nodes are version 1.13.3 kubectl get component status um, scheduler healthy controller healthy etcd data store healthy okay cool that's it and that saved me another video. I thought uh, it would cause some problem, but I need to play with it. Um, okay.
kubectl get nodes minus o wide. Yep, still on Docker runtime 1.13.1, and it works perfectly fine. Okay, that's well and good. Let's see if we can start another container. kubectl run nginx1 image nginx minus minus replicas 3. Okay, container is getting created. Running, running, running. They're all running fine, so I don't see any problem. Okay, cool. And that's how you would upgrade your Kubernetes cluster. And as I told in the start of the video, this might not be a best practice, but um, I hope it is because I followed the official documentation. Um, and this is the first time I was actually testing. Um, so it really worked very well and I hope it uh, helped you okay so thank you so much for watching this video if you've got any questions or comments um, or anything else that's not working fine following my uh, video or any of the files in my github repository just um, leave me a comment I should be able to help you and um, I think I've got few more uh, Kubernetes related videos I think I've covered uh, the basic fundamental ones for the beginners. Um, I might um, look into some uh, intermediate concepts uh, in terms of uh, skill levels. Um, yep. Right, okay. Um, if you find this video useful, please share it with your friends and um, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.